Guys, we came over to Wisconsin and we are at the Army Museum with some friends, Steve. Hey, we say hi, Steve. And I have my other friends. <laughs> yeah, I'm about to check out some stuff for you guys. Let's start with the Harley Davidson WLA. This baby was a popular bike among the American Armed Forces. They used it for police work, reconnaissance, and communications. Its lights were changed from the civilian model to meet military standards, and it was fitted for the special brackets that can carry a submachine gun. With speeds of 65 miles per hour, it was one of the fastest bikes of the war. The flag is raised. Camp Hood, Texas is officially launched. And here are the tank destroyers for which this center is fast becoming famous. Giant fighters mounted on half tracks. They're Uncle Sam's answer to Hitler's tank columns. Once feared, but today, targets for the tank destroyer. The M3 half track personal carrier was an open top armored car with front wheels and rear tracks. It was actively used by the US during the Second World War and it was produced from 1940 to 1945. During the production, they released a little over 31,000 units of the M3 armored personnel carriers in various models. And now let's talk about the AIM-4 Falcon air-to-air -air missile. The Falcon was first operation guided air-to-air -air missile of the United States Air Force. Development began in 1946 in Tuscan, Arizona, and it was first tested in 1949. The missile entered service in the USAF in 1956. Now let's go take a walk outside and see what they got out there. This is where all military vehicles come to die. <laughs> Ooh, what's this? The M42 Duster. This is an American Armored Light Air Defense Scout built for the United States. They built it from 1952 until December 1960 and it was in service until 1988. The General Motors Corporation Tank Division made this vehicle and they used components from the M41 light tanks and it was constructed all of welded steel. No wonder it's still here. If these tanks could talk, I wonder what they could say. The crazy stories they will have to tell. Why do I feel like this helicopter should be in a cartoon? <laughs> and this is supposed to be a museum. More like a military junkyard. Let's go find something worth recording. Oh look, the ferret! This is a British armor fighting vehicle designed and built for reconnaissance purposes. It was produced between 1952 and 1971, so it was widely adopted by regiments and British Army, as well as the RAF regiment and Commonwealth countries throughout the period. Let's keep on walking and let's see what else can we find. What the hell is this? Oh look, more tanks! Oh, the M60. These were developed in 1957 to counter rumors that the Soviets were working on a new main battle tank of their own. It was armed with a 150mm main gun. The Soviet design turned out to be the T-62 tank, which began former service in 1961 and went to see over 22,000 examples produced for the Red Army and Allies. The T-38 Talon. This is a two-seat twin-jet supersonic jet trainer. It was the world's first supersonic trainer and it's also the most produced. The T-38 remains in service as of 2019 in several air forces. The United States Air Force operates most of the T-38s. This guy can go up to 858 miles per hour with a wind span of 24 feet. Each one of these units costs 756,000. And <laughs> that's where your tax money is going, guys. <laughs> The CH-54, or what's left of it. 
This is an American twin-engine heavy lift helicopter. It was designed by Sikorsky Aircraft for the United States Army. It's named after Tarhi, whose nickname was the Crane. He was an 18th century chief of the Wyandotte Indian tribe.